So I'm very pleased and very honored to be invited to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Distonia with all of you. And um, well, I'm, I'm here to speak about blepharospasm and uh, I will present it to all of you, patient and family of the patients and pa person who care about uh, patient with blepharospasm. You have learned to me your disease and I listen to you and I report that in a book that is available at the, uh, at the booth. Okay, what is blepharospasm? It's, uh, first of all, a rare disease, very underdiagnosed and very undertreated. Uh, it's about one on 33,000 inhabitants in Europe. That's about 4,000 in France. And the diagnosis is difficult because it's at the crossroad cross of different specialty ophthalmologists, neurologists, opticians, orthoptists, and others. It's a rare disease, but a known disease. It's a register on, uh, for instance, a French uh, register uh, that's called Orphanet, with a number in Orphanet. It's called usually benign, essential blepharospasm. It's a functional and a focal dystonia. It's localized uh, uh, in the cerebral origin in the basal ganglia, resulting from an undetectable abnormality of the central cerebral nervous common control, as you have heard previously. So the basal ganglia is really at the center of the brain. Uh, it's a combination of thalamus, putamen, pallidum, and noyau codé. Uh, that you are near uh, nigra substance. It's the uh, uh, localization that uh, where there is a connection of all commands from uh, cortex to motor effector. For instance, in MRI, you can see in the brain where it, where it's activated. And the thalamus is around somewhere here. Background, it's uh, mostly a woman disease because it's two thirds of women, second stage of life over 50. Not really genetic for blepharospasm. There is some exception, but generally it's not genetic and not hereditary. But it's not psychologic either. As, as you have learned about that, it's, there is a cause, a known, in the brain, and we don't know how to treat this cause, even we don't know how to localize this, where it happened. And the blepharospasm disappear during sleep. What are the functional signs? First of all, and at the beginning, the, the only sign recognized is a twitching of the eyelid coming from tremulation to blinking to closing the eyelid. When you close your eyelid, you are temporarily blind, associated with dryness and pain. And that's quite new uh, phenomenon to know. It's not only twitching the eyelid and grimace, but it's also dry eye syndrome and pains. The dry eye syndrome uh, is uh, um, is discovered with the sensation of sand in the eye, stone in the eye, itching, burning, dust in the eye, like knife stab and sticky secretion. How you can make a clinical <coughs> diagnosis of uh, dry eye syndrome? There is what we have heard, and there is really objective clinical signs. It's Schirmer test, T breakup time, osmolite test, T electrophoresis test, and slit lamp exam, that's spe specif specific ophthalmologic exam. For instance, Schirmer test is this swab uh, of paper calibrated. We put that in the eye and we wait for five minutes. It's quite nasty, it's not painful. And um, it's just to measure the, the shear secretion. Here, 
it's uh, it's a person come every three months for the injection. We do we control the tear secretion, and every time it's zero, zero, zero. The normal is 15 millimeters in five minutes. So re there is a real dry eye by uh, lack of secretion. The osmolarity of the poor tear that remain, there is special device. It's not painful at all. It's very light. We just touch the tear in, in the inferior uh, uh, eyelid. And we have the osmolarity of the, on the tear. Normally, it's inferior to 300 milliosmol. And usually, there is not hyperosmolarity expected uh, for the person who have a blepharospasm. spasm. Or the test at the slit lamp exam is the tear breakup time. Uh, we put a, a drop of fluorescein uh, uh, drops. And when the tear is evaporate, there is a break of the tear film. We can see it in black. And we measure the time we put the drop and the time we see this uh, evaporation. Normally, it's, it's uh, around 10 or 12 seconds. You, in the dry eye syndrome, it's under six seconds. At the slit lamp exam, we can see the staining to see the micro ulceration on the conjunctiva or the cornea. That's why it's very painful. It's because the cornea or the conjunctiva is just full of micro ulceration. And blepharospasm, so we see the spasm of the palpebra. It's the dry eye syndrome and is the pain and the pain are coming from everywhere. There is the corneal pain in su because of the superficial keratitis. There is a photophobia, not only when there is a big sun, a bright sun, but sometimes when there is a, a white, white, you say white day, when the light is very special. There is pain around the eye. There is pain with the muscular pain of the frontal or around the palpebra. Classification of blepharospasm, there is <coughs> kind of tonic blepharospasm and kind of akinetic blepharospasm. Conic, tonic blepharospasm is a normal, benign, essential blepharospasm, sometimes associated with spasmodic entropion of the lower lid and over the increasing uh, spasm, it's Mesh syndrome, you have heard about it. When it's akinetic, or it seems to be akinetic, it seems to be apraxia of lid opening. In fact, it's a dystonia of the pretarsal eyelid. So the tonic usual blepharospasm, represented by the benign essential blepharospasm, can begin with palpebral tremulation, eyelid spasm very quickly, and after there is a closer, very uh, strong of the, all the eyelids, with the eyebrow spasm and the closure of all the upper face. Associated with the sign of the nose is blepharospasm and bunny signs, contraction of the nose alea, and over will be the mage disease. This different kind of blepharospasm, and this is typical way to open the eye. The patient tried to open it with two fingers, and even the strength of the fingers are not sufficient to open the eyes. The age is mostly over 50. Spasmodic entropion associated, because the spasm is so uh, important, the eyelid uh, roll uh, inside, and the eyelashes rub the conjunctiva and the cornea, increasing the ulceration. It's very painful, and you need to have injection on this, uh, under the skin, in, in the muscle responsible. And MESH syndrome is contraction of the muscle we see above, and the cheekbones, zygomatic muscle, muscle around the nose, platysma and neck muscle to the collar bones, oropharynx contraction also. That's MESH syndrome, and we, we call it bunny sign. It's because there is crispation of the muscle around the nose, making the nose moving every time, like a rabbit. 
Blepharospasm can be associated with other dystonia. More often, it's dysphonia, dysphagia, or hand dystonia. Alors. I would like to put the film. Uh, ah, voilà. That's a case with dysphonia. I don't know if you can, we can hear it? No? So this, uh, this. Et quand vous marchez, vous tombez pas. That's me. <laughs> ben, pour l'instant, non. <laughs> non. Mais c'est vrai que là, dans, à la petite salle pétrière, on va pas marcher sur une ligne. Sometimes avec les deux pieds, là, devant l'autre, j'ai un petit peu de mal à tenir l'équilibre. Blocks. Mais bon, j'ai peut-être une question d'habitude aussi. Et ça, c'est parce que vos yeux, ils se ferment ou c'est pas Ah non, non. OK. And this one is with uh, right spasm. So she had a reverse spasm with the photophobia, and I asked her to write, and the, you see the finger coming, and after she's going to, to get up because she cannot write anymore, and she has to... Because she cannot write anymore uh, sitting, she has to get up. And you see the contraction on the on the forearm. And after there is the shoulder that is rolling inside. Voilà. Uh, Blepharospasm is not hemifacial spasm. That's not the same disease. It's the same treatment if we want. It's still neurotoxin injection in the muscle but it's a fascial nerve involved. It's not central dystonia, it's peripheral problem. It's not a secondary blepharospasm, iatrogenic or secondary to eye disease, dry eye, ocular allergy, blepharitis, trauma, surgery, facial or papyrotics, or psychiatric. Blepharospasm is a real problem in the life. It impaired quality of life. Problem in vision, when you close your eyes, you have functional blindness. In ca it can uh, stay a long time. Inability to focus, reduction in visual field, problem with screen, tablets, or ATM, problem with vision in movement, when you look and you move, it's impossible for you to look at, and when you look something that is moving, it's impossible for you to look at. When you're in a train, just impossible, or just in a car, even if you don't drive, you just have to close your eyes. It's, it's impossible to stay eyes open. Problem of your own balance, difficulty to stare at someone who are speaking to, to look at a person, so it makes problems in the social life. Quality of life is impaired in independence of movement. Driving is becoming impossible and is um, uh, not available. Cycling is getting impossible. Walking, you are going to fall. Falls are very often, and when you fall, you can have fractures. There is problem with independence in household tasks, even with cooking, and the pain is is a, a, a burden in all the quality of life. Photophobia, we've seen it. Periorbital pain, oculomotor pain, corneal pain with keratitis. All that, you can add psychosocial, professional, and familiar problems. <coughs> the treatment of the blepharospasm, as you have just seen, is no toxin injection every three months. That's the last thing. It's not the uh, etiologic uh, cause is just the effect cause that we are treating. Treatment of the dry eye is, is you have to add, have a treatment of the dry eye, treatment of the pain, treatment of the photophobia with sunglasses, palpebra surgery in some cases, mechanical suspension of the palpebra in some cases, brain, uh, deep brain stimulation is not really in normal essential referral spasm and you have your tips and tricks. So the injection are uh, in the pretarsal orbicularis oculi. It can be in preceptal and orbital too. 
can be in the corrugatus and procerus, even in the lower cheek, if necessary. In mage disease, we, ha we have to inject in the cheeks and even in the platysma in the neck. Treatment of the photophobia, we have a lot of different quality of therapeutic uh, glasses and you have to try them. And even put two, two uh, kind of uh, sunglasses. This is a normal, I would say, very dark sunglasses. And this lady put another one that protect her from the light from the top and the wind from uh, lateral. Artificial tears are needed. And your special tips and tricks, and there is a special uh, presentation about that. It's about singing, whistling, shouting, shooing, with the trigger point, uh, with the finger somewhere uh, on the cheek, and try to finger opening. Voila, that's happy birthday to Distonia. And uh, that's a long time I tried to jump uh, for Distonia. It's quite <laughs> difficult for me. <laughs> and uh, my present is the book that is free and available at Distonia booth. Uh, it's a book that explains blepharospasm in a very simple way so everyone can understand and the family and the neighbor can understand what it is and it's uh, disposable uh, just here. Thank you for your attention.